Hey everyone, today we are going to be talking about MLMs, or multi-level marketing, a concept which sounds way more legit than it actually is, because trust me, it is dodgy as hell. To the average person when you first hear about MLMs or multi-level marketing, it can sound like a legit business kind of idea or opportunity that you know is going to net you millions and make you your fortune, but it's not. When you break down what an MLM is, it is basically just a pyramid scheme masquerading as something way more legitimate than it actually is. I thought by now, you know, like 2018, people would be more aware of MLMs and pyramid schemes and kind of stay away from them, but it turns out more and more people every year are getting involved in multi-level marketing, especially in the UK. I think one statistic said there's something like 500,000 people involved in multi-level marketing schemes in the UK. Um, at the minute, and as of 2016, about 75% of them were women. More and more are popping up all the time, they're getting more and more prolific, and I feel like we need to kind of talk about them more, especially in the UK, where they're kind of ignored a little bit, I think, and so more and more people are getting involved, and more and more people are losing money because of them. People getting involved in MLMs like to call themselves self-employed, or girl bosses or boss babes and they like to pretend they're entrepreneurs and they're this and they're this and they can sound like a very appealing lifestyle but it's not what you're actually going to be getting and so today I thought we should talk about it. In a global digital economy, more and more of us want the freedom to work for ourselves. With commitment, determination and willingness to learn, anyone can create an outstanding sustainable income from this network. Anything from £1,200 to £10,000 a month and more. The potential really is uncapped. Are you looking to get more out of life? Earn extra income? Have more control and flexibility? If you're looking for those things on your terms, Amway may be the answer. Because Amway can be exactly what you want it to be. Providing you with a flexible opportunity that puts you in control. I was really looking for a legitimate way to work from home. Um, somehow spend more time with my family, but I still needed the income. At first, when I started building my business, I was hopeful that it could be what our family needed. I was hopeful just to replace income that I had made previously. Because that's the thing with MLMs. They make it sound appealing. They make it sound like you're going to be this independent business person who's going to work their own hours and do their own thing and make their own money. And that's how MLMs get you. They suck you in when you're vulnerable, maybe when you've lost a job, maybe when you're short on money, maybe when you're in debt. That's how they get you. And they prey on the vulnerable. They prey on the ill-informed. And that's why I want to talk about this today, to make sure no one is ill-informed anymore and no one is left vulnerable to these guys and their scams. But before I get into like any intense criticism and talk about why MLMs are bad, um, let's take a look at what a multi-level marketing scheme or what multi-level marketing is. Have you ever seen an image like this pop up on your Facebook feed, your Instagram feed, Twitter, any kind of social media profile? Have you ever seen something like this? Would you be interested in a lit 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 opportunity? You could be home all day and not feel guilty about bringing in that dollar dollar dollar. Join my lip sense team! If you've not seen anything like this, you're lucky. But many of us have, myself included. And if you have seen this, you've just been pitched to by someone involved in an MLM and you need to run. Run for your life. Multi-level marketing, sometimes known as network marketing, is very, very similar to a pyramid scheme. Although on the surface they seem more legit because there are actual products being sold, the problem is the same basic principles are there in terms of recruiting more people to earn more money and recruiting more people to earn more money and they recruit people to earn more money. It's still a pyramid scheme in that respect and the products involved are often poor quality or lacking any real value. It's just they have to have those products to sell to make them legal. This is a really great diagram from Feedo which shows the basic structure of an MLM and I'll tell you this now, only these top level people on this diagram have any chance of making any real money here. The rest of them are pretty much screwed. So to go into a little bit of detail, you basically you start with this company and they make some cheap crappy product, right? It might be knockoff perfume, it might be cheap tacky makeup, it might be leggings that are thinner than tights, you know who I'm talking about. It might be some kind of herbal supplement or weight loss product. It could be like vitamins or essential oils, something like that. There's a whole, whole bunch of them out there. I'm sure there's a lot you've heard of. I don't want to name any in particular, but you know who I mean. So you start with this crappy product, but 
let's be completely honest here, the product does not matter. They all work the same way. One thing I do find interesting though is that I have found this trend among the products in that they all seem to play into some kind of vulnerability. They kind of prey on specific vulnerabilities, for example if you're feeling insecure about your looks, about your weight, about your health, if you have health or medical problems, they kind of prey on this. It, it's kind of like a trend amongst all MLM products that I've seen so far. I'm sure there are a few exceptions, but you know. So basically the company at the top who's making this product, they recruit people to sell their product. They don't get a salary, but instead they kind of work on commission and they get a certain amount of money for each product that they sell. These people can then go on to recruit other people to also sell the products and they earn a little bit of their commission and they earn money for signing them up and so on and so on. These people go on and recruit people to sell the products and soon you end up with this big, big, massive web like on the diagram we just saw. The problem is that unlike in like a legitimate business, like in a shop or something like that, instead of being encouraged to like go out there and find the market and sell to certain people who are looking for this product and so on, you're actually just encouraged to sell and to recruit to people within your like family and friends, which is why a lot of people turn to like Facebook and Instagram to market their stuff. And this is how like social media feeds end up like just filled with like offers trying to sell you like trash for things that you don't need and you never ask for. And that's why, you know that girl you went to school with like 10 years ago who suddenly pops up and she's like, hi babe, how you doing? Yeah, by the way, um, do you need these vitamins? Like I've noticed you're like a bit unhealthy and um, I know it's just, I'm a small business owner now, um, I'm self-employed, I am an entrepreneur, and I just thought maybe I could help you babes, you know? You're looking, you're looking a little bit tubs, looking a little bit pasty. I just thought I could help. <laughs> Never doing that voice again, I'm sorry. But anyway, it's more to it than just like, you know, a big kind of recruitment drive and like layers of recruitment. There's more to it than that because often the people who are recruited have to invest some of their own money into kind of like a starter selling kit. So this might be to buy the products in the first place. Often they kind of make you pay for training resources, which aren't exactly legit or very good. They often make you pay for marketing materials, which can include like templates of like posts to send out to your friends and put on Facebook groups. It can include like little diagrams and pictures and um, graphics to put on Instagram and Facebook and stuff like that. And you're paying like extortionate amounts of money for kind of nothing, basically, these starter kits. So these are normally kind of like, you know, there's some kind of buy-in price of like a hundred pounds or a hundred dollars or something like that. But sometimes they go up to like extortionate amounts, like seven thousand dollars and stuff like that. It's ridiculous how much money they get you to put into this with the promise that, oh, you'll make it back, babes, don't worry, yeah. So because you're investing this money and because the people at the lower levels really don't make that much money, it's very hard to sell these crappy products, especially to your family and friends who probably don't care that much. You're both losing your money and potentially ruining relationships with friends and family. And it's just not worth it to me. It just doesn't seem like a good idea, does it? So I found this absolutely heartbreaking post that had been posted on Facebook uh, that was then posted to Reddit and that's how I found it. It's from a woman who was involved in a multi-level marketing scheme and well, we'll just read it for ourselves. It's heartbreaking, really. Okay guys, hi, first time posting. I'm in a real pickle. Um, how to put this carefully. I spent our honeymoon fund and now my fiance is ready to kill. I didn't mean to, I thought I'd make it back, I just kept spending. You gotta spend more to make more, you know? I started my own business selling makeup, it was an MLM, and it didn't cost very much to start, that's how they get you. But I had to keep buying and marketing and buying and marketing more and more. Can't sell what you don't have, right? Can't reach people if you don't market, right? I thought I was doing everything right, and long story short, I spent our honeymoon fund. Thousands of dollars. He's so upset, we aren't speaking, he left me yesterday and went to go stay with his brother, and I'm not sure if or when he's gonna answer my calls. I don't know what to do. He didn't say the wedding's off, but we only have a week and a half till the big day. I'm panicking, I have no idea what to do. I really effed this one up, help me. So this is a story of a woman who literally spent money that wasn't hers to spend on getting involved in a multi-level marketing, marketing kind of scam or scheme because she was told she could make it back. And now the money's gone, she's not selling any products, she's not managing to recruit ever, anyone, and she's kind of screwed because she's lost so much money that wasn't really hers to begin with. I'd like to say this is just like one example of like, oh, this can go wrong, this can happen. But sadly, these kind of stories aren't the exception. They're the rule. A few more examples here, right? <sighs> this is a post from a woman. Um, well, I'll, I'll read it to you first. She says, have you been wanting to join It Works, which is a MLM, but just can't seem to find the $99 investment to get started? Well, this post is for you. When a group of VIP distributors who make an average of 100,000 plus per year 
were asked this question, this is how they responded. I'm curious, who didn't have the $99 to sign up, sign up but found a way? What did you have to do to get the $99? And then it's a list of responses to that question, so how people found the money to um, like had this initial investment in this MLM. And basically it's all these women saying that they didn't have the money, but they found a way to do it. And so this woman is encouraging other people to go out and do these same things. And just to read a few off the list. I used a birthday check from my grandparents. Maxed out my credit card. I borrowed it. I borrowed it twice. I was overdrawn in my bank account and didn't realize until I deposited the first borrowed cash. My boyfriend let me borrow it. We used our, this one really gets me. We used our rent and health insurance money in the account for the kit and booster, then sold a whole box of wraps before they came, ran to the bank that night, sold another box the next morning and two face wraps, ran to the bank, checked cleared the same day and didn't bounce by some miracle. Credit card. Grocery money. Hubby said we were gonna die because we wouldn't have food. LOL. Borrowed it from my grandpa. Used my electric bill money. Overdrew my account and replaced it later by borrowing literally had no money at that point in my life. Used my credit card for the kit and $500 boost kit to paid my electric bill late. And so instead of taking these as warning stories, she says, no more excuses, stop watching and start changing your life. Please don't do any of these things. Do not get into debt for an MLM. Please don't. It's irresponsible, it's stupid, and you're not guaranteed to make your money back at all. I know, like there's a whole thing in business where it says, oh, gotta invest money to make money. It's not the case with MLMs. Chances are you'll invest money and you'll lose it because you won't make it back. And let's be honest, any money that you do make back is just money that you're essentially taking off your family and friends for crap products. Do you really wanna make your money that way? What makes you special that you think that, you know, your family and friends can go out and do a nine to five job and then you can just take a portion of that money and in return give them some pills that aren't gonna do anything? or a bit of knockoff perfume. So if you are still a little bit confused about what an MLM is, here's a nice little simple explanation from uh, the BBC, actually, who explain it really, really well in this clip. Firstly, let's explain what multi-level marketing is using our fictional MLM company, Fantabulousness. Fantabulousness make their own perfumes called Live Your Best Life and Positive Dreams. Fictional Amy is recruited by her old school friend, Karen, to join her team. So Amy joins up by paying £100 for a starter kit and Karen makes money for recruiting Amy. Amy makes money by selling perfume to her own customers like her sister Jane and her best friend Lily and Karen gets a cut of those sales too. Amy also builds a team. She makes money for recruiting her sister Jane and every time Jane sells some perfume, Amy gets a cut of that sale. And then Karen also gets money from the recruitment of Jane and her sales. The more people below you, the more selling, the more recruiting, the more money there is going up the chain. So to summarise basically, you've got big initial investments usually, you're selling to people who really don't want to be sold to, and there's little chance of making your money back, and you're selling poor quality products anyway that don't really do anything, Chances are you're not gonna make your money back, never mind make a real living wage, never mind become this millionaire that you kind of dream of, right? So why do people still fall for MLMs? Why do people still get involved? It's really sad because multi-level marketing is a multi-million dollar industry. Like I say, in the UK alone, there's over 500,000 people currently involved in MLMs. 75% of them are women. In the US, it's even more. The numbers there are ridiculous. I don't know them off the top of my head, but it's a scary amount. Why? Why are there so many people? Why has no one done anything about it? Why are people not speaking out about this more? Why are people still falling for this? Well, I found like a couple of potential reasons for this and I started looking into this. And actually one of the big comparisons I found was people saying that people who are already in MLMs and who are at the kind of like higher up positions, they've been compared to vultures. They say that they look for vulnerable people and look for ways to exploit people and then they are ruthless. They just go in there and take what they can. These people are so quick to exploit any tragedy, whether it's losing a loved one, losing your job, being in debt. They jump on this with promises of making thousands of dollars or thousands of pounds a month with promises of you being a hashtag boss babe. In a fast changing world in which nothing is certain, it's important to find some way of safeguarding your future and that of your loved ones. People often start to wonder if working for someone else is for them. Salary comes in, bills to pay, not much left and on top of that there's never enough time for family. Sound familiar? This may be your opportunity to make a difference in your life. 
I found these posts on Reddit that kind of like sum it up a little bit. So this was a private message that someone had sent to them. And she said, hey girl, so you got a new job? How exciting. Thank you. It's about time, lol. How are you feeling about le leaving the little lady all week? Oh, you must be so nervous. Ah, uh, it's a bummer, but long overdue. Like, she's 10 months today, and it's been a long, long nine months with her here. And besides, I get to work from home once a week, so I'm, I'm not too far from her. Well, would you be interested in a lit, lit, lit opportunity? You could be home all day and not feel guilty about bringing in that dollar, dollar, dollar. Yikes. Um, hey, I, I don't feel guilty about making money, and, and even if I found a job, not peddling poop on Facebook to people who don't want it, no offence. I'd still want Elle to be in daycare with the other kids her age. Like, I, I appreciate the mum guilt. Like, how will my child understand that I had to go to work and bring in a natural paycheck instead of going into debt to sell snake oil to my friends? <laughs> Gosh! Well, the good thing is, I can use my salary to save for the therapy she's gonna need when she realises how well both me and her father provided for her, even if it meant not being up her bum 24-7 for her whole life. Thank you for thinking of me though. Um, I didn't mean to offend you, Kim. Uh, you don't need to be rude to me. Sorry, I offered you a chance to be a loving mother and a provider. I'll not bother you again. So again, they're kind of like trying to prey on this new mother being like, oh, if you go and have a real job and leave your child in daycare, then you're a bad mother. Like it's, it's preying on people's vulnerabilities and their insecurities and it's just not fair. This next post, um, again, it's a Facebook one, it's from a woman trying to sell, and she says, Today only, doing a flash sale on the most amaze oils available. These oils are natural, perfectly safe, and will turn your life around. I gave some to a friend who had serious depression and suicide thoughts, and they snapped right out of it. No more negative thoughts. Only $39.99 for a full pack to last you two weeks, and you'll be coming back for more. <laughs> Yeah, please don't listen to this woman. This is really, really bad. Like, don't ever think that essential oils are just suddenly gonna cure your depression or anxiety or any other mental health issue. It's not, I'll be honest. There's no proof they work, don't try it. And the thing is, I've seen quite a few posts like this, so like, not just this one, and one of them, this one was like, oh, throw away your medication and use these essential oils. No, that is so dangerous. Don't do that. Don't listen to that. And stop trying to use serious health issues like mental illness to push your products, because that's just not fair. Again, you're taking advantage of someone's vulnerability. And seriously, 40 quid for two weeks. Mate, I get two months worth of um, my antidepressants for eight pound. <laughs> I'm going to take the medicine that works over this trash any day, thank you. And again, talking about exploiting kind of tragedies and horrible situations, this one really disgusts me. So it reads, what is awesome about unique makeup is that it's water resistant. So I can go to a funeral, go to my brother's grave, or cry for anything else and know my makeup will not run or come off. Just exploiting your brother's death to sell some makeup? Yeah, that's nice. Seriously, this stuff is ridiculous and it does disgust me, right? 90% of it is full of greedy, vulturish behaviour. Um, so others compare like the people in MLMs to being like in a cult. So it's possible that the people who are already involved don't really realise how much th how much they're exploiting other people. They don't necessarily realise how crappy the products they're selling are. They don't necessarily see anything bad in what they're doing because it is kind of like they've been manipulated and brainwashed potentially. I think when you go into MLMs, it's very much like a cult everyone's buzzing each other up and you're getting quite excited. And of course there is a possibility that they've just already invested so much time and money into this MLM that they don't necessarily want to just cut their losses and let go. They already feel like, oh, just, just another week, another month, another year, another hundred pound, another thousand pound and I'll get there. Like they've already invested so much they don't want to give up yet. You know, they've got someone up on stage who's telling you that for years and years they like struggled with their business and then all of a sudden they focused really hard and suddenly they're earning five, 10, 15 grand a month. And you're just sitting there thinking, yeah, that's gonna be me. My first check with Maluka was $75. And we kind of chuckled a little bit and we were like, okay, we have worked really hard and we got a $75 check. But the next month, our check was $6,200. You're trusting the process that I would reach the goal and Susie kept saying, you know, if you're doing the right activities, it's going to work. And it did. Ellie told us she felt pressured to fulfill a minimum spend each month, which could be products or recruitment. The more they spend, 
the deeper they get into, um, into the belief that success is just around the corner. So I went to my upline and told them I was struggling and putting everything on the credit card and they just told me it would pay off. And at the time, I thought they were helping me out by encouraging me to continue. And then, of course, there are the people who were just going out of their way to manipulate you and make it seem like it's this wonderful, amazing miracle job that's gonna save your life, it's gonna change everything. And these were often the people you find posting on social media. So if you've ever been on Instagram and looked up, like, you know, the hashtag boss babe um, kind of stuff and the whole, like, hashtag work from home, all that kind of thing, like, you will see these posts everywhere. Yeah, so you have posts like this with this woman who's like, uh, 400 million a year with zero debt in five years, built on a mission to uplift, empower, and validate women. This company is so much more than makeup. Pretty amazing. Ask me how to be a part of something wonderful. So like, they're not talking about the downside. They're not talking um, about any of the costs. They're not being upfront about any of the costs. They're just making it sound like it's this, you know, amazing, wonderful, great thing where you're gonna make millions from doing like five hours work a week. This next person who says, what would you say if I told you that you could be earning from 5,000 euros to 250,000 euros a month just by using your phone or laptop every day? How many hours you put in is up to you. Now this might just be me, but I probably wouldn't take business advice from someone spelling phone with an F, but that's just a personal preference. And I've got to say, to be honest, I reckon you can make this much a month just by using your phone or laptop. I mean, I... Well, I don't make it anywhere close to this, but one day I could through doing YouTube and stuff. But that's different, you know, I'm actually creating something that I know is quality. Yes, I work from home and have my own hours, but I still do like a 40 plus hour work week. Some nights I'm working till like 9, 10, 11 p.m. And some days I can take off if I want, which is nice. Sometimes I work weekends, sometimes I don't. So my point is, this stuff is possible. You can earn this much working from home on your own terms with little investment, but it's not through MLMs. They are offering women a dream. They're offering them the chance, they say, to earn a lot of money for very little work while staying at home with their children. It's a lie. Yeah, it is, it's a lie. That's all there is to it. Think about these 500,000 people who are involved in MLMs in the UK, right? Only a handful of those are ever gonna be super successful, making thousands upon thousands of pounds a month. I nearly said dollars, and not in the UK. Only a handful of those are gonna be making these like thousands of pounds a month. And not even that, only a handful of those 500,000 are even gonna be making a basic living wage. Most people don't even make minimum wage on this stuff. For the amount of hours they put in, and the amount of investment they put in, the profit they get back is not even close to minimum wage. I think the equivalent is something like two pound an hour at best. Best. It is ridiculous. I know that sounds like a number I just pulled out of my bum, but it is, um, it's like a post I saw on Reddit of this person who was like, um, oh yeah, so I did an MLM for like this many months and this is how much I worked out my hourly rate was. And I was like, damn. So that is just one example, but it's a kind of typical example, you know? The people that you see paraded before you at the rallies, on social media, in the lifestyle videos, they are a tiny, tiny percentage. So if a handful of people are making thousands of pounds a month, a handful of people are making a basic living wage, that's also hundreds upon hundreds of thousands of people who are barely making enough money to live, who are getting into debt, who are struggling, who are spending more and more money that they don't have on products that they don't need and can't sell, and they're ruining friendships and relationships and family relationships along the way. And I just don't think it's worth it. They show all these big success stories on social media, but that's not the truth of it. That's not everything. There's a really horrible dark side that you don't see enough of. And that's kind of why I wanted to make this video to bring that to light. Because this isn't some miracle job. Chances are it's something that's just gonna put you in debt. I was actually really apprehensive to make this video. So if you follow me on Twitter, you'll know that this is something that I've kind of had in the pipeline for quite a while. And it's something that I've done a lot of research on and been working on for quite a few weeks, maybe months now, I'm not sure. Um, and I was all ready to start filming the video a while back when a girl I knew from school got involved in an MLM and she added me to a Facebook group with like 700 other people to sell this like really cheap tacky makeup range that is extremely overpriced and knockoff perfumes where she's like, seriously, she's like claiming like, oh, you can buy this like Chanel number no. five perfume for 18 pound 50. And then like you go on the website and like, it's not Chanel, is it? It's like FM number no. 456. 
that's what you're buying. Apparently it just smells like Chanel. It's a knockoff perfume. Anyway, sorry, I'm, I'm bitter about kind of like knockoff products like that. I just, they annoy me. Like, yeah, cheap kind of duplicates are fine, but don't promote yourself as being the original Chanel number no. five kind of thing. Or Chanel Mademoiselle, that was it. That was the perfume. I'm, I'm just making these names up. I know nothing about perfume. I use a Lady Gaga perfume, I can't speak. So basically I was I was added to this group and then I was like, damn, I was, I was just gonna make my video about this and now if I make the video now, it's gonna seem like I'm attacking her personally and I was like, I don't know what to do. And you know, I'm from this tiny town in South Yorkshire where everyone talks to everyone. And I mean, I live in London at the minute, but my family's still up there, like my parents and, and this girl who literally hasn't spoken to me in I think like seven years, she still lives up there as well, I think. And her mum used to work with my mum, or maybe she still does, I'm not sure. But the point is everyone knows everyone and everyone talks to everyone. And I didn't want to make this video and then have like people be like, oh, did you see the video Rachel made about like, you know, these MLMs and now you're doing this and it, it just is an attack on you. But I didn't want it to come across that way. So I, I stopped making this video for a while and I went away and I completely rethought about how I wanted to approach it. And I, I did more research and I rewrote my script and now I'm here today doing this. And, and I spoke to my mom and asked for her advice and she said, don't do it. And I spoke to another guy who I went to school with, Oliver, who's absolutely lovely. And he has a little YouTube gaming channel as well, which I'll link in the description below. And he was like, just do it. So I got very conflicting information from them. So I just decided to compromise. And I was like, well, you know what? I'll wait a few weeks and then I'll just do it. <laughs> so here I am. But the point is that like, I feel like I do need to kind of like come out and say this and say that this is not a personal attack on anyone involved in an MLM, especially not people who I knew from school. This isn't an attack on you, but it is me expressing concern. Me saying, please don't lose your money in this stuff. Like we might not have spoken in seven years, but I still don't want to see you get hurt or scammed or lose your money. I do care about people involved in this stuff specific people and I don't want to see them get hurt and that's why I decided that even though this might be a little bit controversial and I'm hoping it doesn't cause any problems for my mum I still wanted to talk about this stuff because it's very very important and regardless of who I know who may be involved in stuff I'm still going to call out dodgy business practices because I don't want to see other people get sucked into this stuff. Now I'm not telling anyone what to do, I'm not telling anyone what not to do, I'm not saying you should quit this now, I'm not saying you should cut your losses now, I'm just saying please do a little more research and look into this and be very very careful with how you invest your money in the future. I do now want to talk um, a little bit about some of the sort of like MLM horror stories that I've seen and like I, I find a little bit weird calling them horror stories because they're just people recounting their experiences. And these, as I said, are not the exception. These are the rule. Like nine times out of 10, this is what happens to people. And this is what I want to warn about. So let's take a look at this little clip from um, a little short that the BBC put together on MLMs. Ellie says she got into 10,000 pounds worth of credit card debt in two years. The most I ever made in a month was 400 pounds. So seriously, 400 pound a month was the most she made back. And she is in so much debt, she is not gonna be able to pay that off by selling MLM products. Like, not a chance. That is not a wage you can live on. Not comfortably anyway, not without relying on someone else. And being in that much debt, you've just screwed up your credit for years to come. Good luck getting a mortgage, any of the credit cards, getting anything like a phone on a payment plan. You're absolutely screwed. Came out of it, 2,000 pound in debt it's been an absolute struggle i've had fallouts with my partner over it because i used his credit cards to them a thousand pound is nothing but to me it's everything with losing so much money um i actually went behind in my partner's back so um me and him hadn't get on for a while there because well obviously he's gonna blame me it was me that lost the money and then there's this that i found on reddit again this is absolutely heartbreaking just to read this to you yeah, I paid $7,500 for my onboarding kit and I'm still sitting on most of it. I can't get out, I took out a loan and still owe $5,000 on it. $5,000? The person gives advice and says, Honey, sell what you have and be done with it, it's a very bad thing. I can't sell, that's the problem. I went as low as I could, 35%, and couldn't even sell one thing. That's absolutely not surprising at all. It's taken over my house, ruined my marriage, destroyed my relationship with my kids. It's been a nightmare and the worst mistake I ever made. I've only really talked about it to one person. I've pushed it all to the side right now, trying to ignore it, but it's been bad. This person says, you know, can I put this on Reddit to warn people? And uh, the initial person says, go for it. Everyone should be warned. 
I was told I'd make my money back in six weeks tops. It's been a year and I'm more in debt than ever. No, to keep active we used to have to place an order monthly. So I bought, ready for this, $23,000 worth of inventory this year. Sold four. I was posting in my group, Maltese in Homes, Bender Events, working 70 plus hours a week for nothing. I dealt with a sponsor who has since quit, telling me I was so horrible she wanted to run her car into a tree and treat me like nothing more than poop on the bottom of her shoe. People don't buy stale inventory, you need to order more to sell more. BS. Order more to pad up their bonus checks while I go bankrupt. LLR. The MLM. Uh, won't even take my stuff back since most of it's capsules, so it's nothing but bonfire fuel at this point. I can't give this poop away. And so I think that is just a kind of typical horror story warning to people saying, don't get involved in these things, please. You will end up sitting on inventory like this. You're pressured to spend money that you don't necessarily have with promises that you'll make it back in this time, you'll make it back in this time, when chances are you won't. It's horrific and saddening and I just kind of want to put this out there as a warning to people. And so with that, I do just kind of want to end this here and ask, what do you guys think of MLMs? Have you ever been involved in one? Do you know anyone who was? And if so, what advice would you give to people who are either looking to get involved in one or who are looking to get out of it? Um, honestly, I just say to anyone who's involved in it now, just like cut your losses and get out, please. You'll take a little dip now maybe, but it's better than getting into more and more debt in the future. The less people who get involved in these things, the less power they're gonna have and the less influence and the less pressure they can put on people. Also, I don't understand how anyone can build a relationship with someone just to sell them things. And, and oh, what's that? You like my t-shirt? Haha, <laughs> well if you must know, they're available in my merch store right now. Now, I just wanted to make a joke here about that, but in all seriousness, I do have merch available if you wanna go check it out. This is my gorgeous Adam and Bruce t-shirt and it comes in a whole range of colors and sizes and styles. Um, I have others like my Let's Have a Giggle t-shirts, which I love, uh, my Have a Little Evidence t-shirts, loads, um, and of course, the classic That's Not How You Science t-shirt. Um, in response to Ken Ham, because Ken Ham. Um, if you do want to check out any of my merch, it's available right now in my store, starting from like £11. It's all really good value, I want to make it as like affordable for you guys as possible, and it's available to ship worldwide as well. And so, I absolutely love this stuff. Of course I went for pink for this, to support my favourite couple in the world. Who doesn't love Adam and Bruce? They're meant to be together. Anyway, I'm done. I'm done selling myself out now and promoting my merch store. I'm done, I'm shutting up, I'm being quiet. Um, in all seriousness, let me know what you think of MLMs. Mlem, mlem, mlems. In response to my last video, my shout out goes to, um, I hope I'm pronouncing this right, Necrofi, Necrofe, who says, I asked you uh, what would you respond to the girl in the dating profile, um, and this guy said, message her, Scorpio, more like Scorpio, no. <laughs> I love that so much, it just made me giggle. Um, anyway, if you fancy a shout out in my next video, tell me about your personal experiences with MLMs or people who have tried to sell you on like an MLM or MLM stuff. Let me know what happened, how it went, and I'll give you a shout out in my next video. But for now, thank you so, so much for watching today. Please don't get into debt. Please don't get involved in an MLM and also buy my stuff. Also, thanks for watching. Bye. Thank you so much for watching today. If you enjoyed this, you can check out more from me on the Here and How podcast. There's a link on this end screen. I also have merch available now if you want to check it out. There is a link in the description below. And I absolutely love, love, love all my designs. So please go check them out. I'm really, really pleased with them. Also, a huge, huge thank you guys out to everyone who's supporting this channel on Patreon this month. You guys are all incredible. An extra big special thank you and a hug goes out to Gambit and Chauffeur, Dave Sean, Mark Dana, Christian Berg, Rachel B. Royer, Jaden Shepard, Pixelated Skeptic, Jaylee Moore, Religionist BS, Sir Michael Moore, Matthew Minamar, Pixie Gibbs, and Greg Ladd. And to everyone else who is shown on this end screen and mentioned down in the description below, thank you so much. You guys are incredible.